So I used to try to read the Bible all the way through. And soon I would come up against this book called Leviticus. And I would read a few pages into Leviticus and I would start thinking, wow, this is like a low budget horror slasher movie. Why, what does this have anything to do with my life? I mean, this is all about how you sacrifice animals and what you do with the blood after you sacrifice the animals. And I think, we don't do this today. So why should I read this book? It's ridiculous. So I stopped reading it. And I've come to believe that um, that was unfortunate because Leviticus, I've come to believe, is one of the most important books that's ever been written. I mean, Leviticus knows what it means to be human better than we do. It knows that what we have kind of developed is this propensity, this natural inclination to violence better than we do. And it throws it in our face and it makes us uncomfortable because somehow we know that this is who we are. I mean, we're still dealing with violence today. We haven't washed this violence away from our lives. And so Leviticus is extremely, extremely relevant. It's important to understand the culture in which Leviticus was written, the worldview that Leviticus was written in. I mean, it's, it's written by these Hebrews who are in conversation with other cultures in their world. These other cultures, Leviticus, will off, the authors often bring up Egypt and the Canaanites. And it'll say, don't do what the Egyptians do. Don't do what the Canaanites do. Well, these, these other cultures are all caught up in, these, in a culture of sacrifice, a culture of violence. And they end up thinking that the gods are angry at them, that the gods are, have this wrath, that they've done something to hurt these gods and so they end up having to sacrifice things in order to appease the gods and they start off with grain they move up to more important things such as animals even human beings and even more importantly their children there's this god in Leviticus the Leviticus talks about this god named Molech and this Canaanite god who desires the blood of children and so Leviticus will say this is a false view of God God doesn't need you to sacrifice human beings. God doesn't want you to sacrifice human beings, especially your children. So it'll end up saying, don't sacrifice to the, to the god Molech. It says, in essence, if you think God is angry at you, if we think as a community that God is angry at us, sacrifice these animals. And then we can be assured that God is not angry at us anymore. Then we can be assured that God is, we are good with God, that everything is cool, right? Well, this is, what Leviticus is doing here is providing an outlet for our violence that is not an outlet of human beings. Now, sacrifice gets entangled with this understanding of God, but it's also this understanding of how to form community. I mean, when these other cultures are sacrificing animals, it's as if, and human beings, it's as if these, the blood of the human beings is washing away their sins. It washes away their conflicts within the community. And they have this kind of notion that this is, that this is going on, and, and so they keep going back to it. It's this unconscious, on an unconscious level, they see that this is happening, or this non-conscious level. They see that this, they, they have this sense that this is happening, and so all of this conflicts that they have within themselves gets redirected onto a human being, and they, they think that the gods want this to happen. So their responsibility for the violence gets deflected from themselves onto God. Well, the authors of Leviticus see this happening, and they say this, this is a false view not only of God, but of how to build community. And so you have this chapter in Leviticus, chapter 19. One of the most beautiful chapters in all of the Bible. And it starts off saying, most biblical translations will have it say, Be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. Well, a literal translation of 
this verse is, you are holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. And the authors here are in conversation with, with these ideas in Genesis. We discussed where Genesis says, God created human beings in the image of God. In the image of God, God created human beings. And God breathes God's spirit into human beings. There's something, there's something of value. There's something almost godly about human beings. There's the spirit of God, the image of God. And then you have, then you have in Exodus, we talked about where Moses comes up to the burning bush, right? And God's God gives God's name and God, God's name is associated with the suffering of the victims of Egypt, the suffering of humanity. God somehow identifies with this suffering and says, go set these people free. And Leviticus 19 deconstructs this idea that, that God wants this wrath, that God is wrathful and God needs this sacrifice. But then it goes on to deconstruct this idea that we form community in sacrificial ways, forming community over and against another person. And it'll, Leviticus 19, 18 will say that the true way to form human communities is through love. Love your neighbor as yourself. No longer do we need to sacrifice in order to build community over and against another person, but we love one another. And oftentimes this love indeed may take on an element of sacrifice, a transformation of what sacrifice means. Sometimes in a world that's based on sacrifice, we have to perform loving acts of sacrificial love, where we no longer commit forms of violence onto others, thinking that God wants us to do this, but we take violence upon ourselves in order to identify with the God who is the God of, the God who hears the cries of the victim. So those are my thoughts on Leviticus, on building true community, on understanding that God no longer desires the sacrifice, but desires love. Communities based on love. So I'd love to hear what you have to say. Bye-bye.